So we're gonna do a little bit of a Q&A today. So I'm kind of switching up the format. Normally I'd do this live, but this time I thought I'd post a video and use the comments section on that video as the comments request section so people could post their questions there and they could be voted up if they were interested or if more people were interested in hearing the answer to that question. So I think this format should work out pretty well. I actually have a lot of questions here so I could possibly do another one or two videos like this just based off the questions I received on that video. So if this format works out, we'll be doing that. So let's get into the first one. <laughs> First one is from Bob, Bob Lee's Woodshop. Congratulations, Bob, you had the most popular question by a fair margin. <laughs> Bob wants to know about the uh, about uh, my next shop. How big is it gonna be? Is it gonna be part of the house or freestanding building? So if you aren't already aware, Lindsay and I have been uh, house hunting for a while now, about a little over six months. Um, we've outgrown this place. This has never been a forever home for us. I bought this as a starter home when I was much younger and didn't have any kids. So we've been looking for a new house. We're not in a rush, so we have the uh, benefit of time, or luxury of time, or whatever. So as far as the house hunt and a dedicated shop space goes, I'm actually not looking for a house specifically with a shop that exists already on the property. Ideally, I would have the same space that I have right now, at least a two car garage that I could work out of until I had the funds and the time to build a dedicated freestanding shop. Who is my favorite YouTuber and why is it Paul Jackman? Probably his good looks and his beautiful use of the palette. So I have a question about the lumber storage and the shed itself is the shed um, heated or conditioned or whatever and it is not as you can see I don't have the dormer windows installed I still have a lot of the soffits to install and the windows on the doors are not installed <laughs> either so basically this is equivalent of storing it outside so any lumber I have out here in the shed is going to come into equilibrium with the outdoor environment which around here is around 11 or 12 percent or so versus the indoor equilibrium, which is what you really want, which is around uh, eight-ish around here, depending on the time of year. So the stuff I dry indoors dries down to 8%, and then if I move it out here for storage, it's back up to 11 or 12. So if I have something out here that's been out here for a while, it is up at that higher moisture content, it needs to acclimate to the shop or to the house before I use it. So what I do for that is anything I pull out of here, I'll either put into the house for a while or bring into the shop until it comes down to that, you know, between eight and nine percent or so before I start working on it. Now, what's kind of nice for me is a lot of the stuff I have for myself is stored in the house. So that stuff is always at indoor equilibrium so I can bring it out to the shop whenever I want and start my project right away with anything I have stored in the house. So Eric wants to know where to get my training in woodworking and is woodworking your full-time job or do you have a day job? So I can answer that last question first. <laughs> uh, I do this for a living. I make videos and post them on the internet for a living. Um, so I have the stuff I do here on YouTube and I have the stuff that I do in the guild, both making videos, posting them on the internet. That's how I make a living. It's um, my day job, my night job, my weekend job, all the time. It's uh, Tuesday morning and I'm doing this. This is what I do for a living and it's amazing. So how do I get my training in woodworking? Um, Trial and error and practice. So, man, I feel old now, but back when I started woodworking, there wasn't a whole lot of stuff on the internet. So I read a lot of books and magazines. And what was nice about that is I didn't get caught up in just watching and reading stuff all the time. There was a finite amount of stuff that I could actually look at. So by virtue of that, if I were to read a book and that's it, then it means after read the book or watch that one little video I might happen to find, I'm out in the shop, I'm making projects, I'm practicing, I'm applying all the things that I've read about into the real world because there's only so much you can convey in a book or in a video and it doesn't always encompass everything you get actually doing that thing. There's a lot of fine or a little minuscule details that you don't necessarily pick up on or aren't presented to you um, 
comparatively to doing it yourself and making your own mistakes. So over the years, built a lot of projects, spent a ridiculous amount of time in the shop and made a fair amount of mistakes of which I've learned a few things from. <laughs> what am I gonna do with my sticker wall? Um, I will probably either just pull these panels out and take them with me or I'll try and peel them off. I don't think these are gonna be too hard to peel off. They're not really all that well adhered to the painted foam, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem to actually move all these stickers somewhere else. So a few people asked about the upgrades to the sawmill and if that's still gonna happen. Well, the mill upgrades are the primary reason why I'm building a belt grinder this year and why I just bought this saw. Now there's just one more tool I'll be upgrading before I get started on that. So I also had a couple of questions on exactly what I plan to do with the upgrades. So I have a bunch of things in my mind that I'm gonna be doing. I don't really have a set order for them right now, but they're going to be powered leveling, uh, leveling slash uh, powered rollers to move a log side to side, as well as get the tip right so it's kind of parallel to the bed of the mill. I'm also going to do chain turners to roll the logs over, a uh, hydraulic side stop so that the side stops automatically adjust to whatever height I need without me having to go over there and manually do that. Um, log clamps as well. Um, I think that's it for the bed. And the carriage would get power feed as well as a debarker blade. Um, I'm not really planning to do any sort of lifting arms because I don't really load logs from the side there. The, most of the time I'm going to have the logs coming directly off the trailer. So putting them down on the ground next to the mill is not something that I would typically do anyway. And having some kind of power equipment to just pop them on the mill isn't really all that out of the question either. Um, so left, lifting arms, might do those just to show them, just for demonstration purposes, but it's not something that I particularly have any use for or any real desire to make. But um, as far as the flow, the workflow for sure, again, I don't really know exactly um, how I'm gonna put them all in or what order I'm gonna put them all in it. I am gonna probably do them at different intervals, uh, one at a time, kind of working through the list. But of course, the first thing that I do will be the hydraulic power unit and then I'll probably do either, I'm thinking I might do the rollers first or the chain turners first because those I have some decent ideas in my mind for and I think they're gonna be the most interesting of all of the upgrades. So those upgrades would be basically like version two of the mill. What I'm almost done with right now is version one which is like the fully manual version of the mill except I did add the powered uh, height adjust on the mill I was originally gonna do that as manual, but I kind of went down that road of power, so that one's kind of a crossover feature. And then version three would be some actual computerized automation where the mill will automatically set the board thicknesses as well as kind of feed itself through. Because so I think that'd be uh, kind of an interesting thing to have set up there. So you, once you get your cant made, you can just tell the mill to make four quarter lumber out of that cant and it would just go ahead and cut it up for you. So that's the long-term plan for that. I think it will be pretty fun. Why am I so awesome? I'm not really sure. I'm just working with what I got. So Chris asked about staying motivated when you work at home. And you know, I've been working at home for a long time. So when I was working before I was doing this, when I moved up here, I started working from home and that was in 2011. And I was at that job until the end of 2014. So about three years or so I worked at home. And then since then it's been another, what, three years or so. So I've been working at home for six years already. Um, and it is a little different if you're working at home in the sense of a traditional employment versus a self-employment. You know, with traditional employment, at least with a lot of jobs, at five o'clock you're done and then you just pick up the next day wherever you left off. With, with self-employment, the amount of work you have to do never ends. So if you don't get through that stuff in that day, it's still waiting for you the next day and the next day and all of your goals and aspirations are still waiting for you to complete all these tasks until you get to well, so you can get to those goals so that alone is a pretty decent motivator however i am human and some days i'm just not feeling it or some days it takes a little while for me to get going today is a good example of that i was up until two working because i wanted to put in some work last night and i was up before eight with the kids so I am tired today. 
So a lot of coffee that definitely helps. But unfortunately, I think I'm to the point in my life where this no longer has an awakening effect on me. So I, I kind of understand myself and that process. So most of the time it's because I'm tired, but that's somewhat easy to get through. Some days I'm just not feeling it, and I know that no matter what I do that day, I'm not going to be nearly as productive as the day where I'm really on. So occasionally, you know, some days I do allow myself to have those days where things just don't really happen. On days like that where I'm just not feeling it, I can't be on camera if I'm not feeling it because it's not, it's not me. Um, it's hard to sit at the computer and do anything, maybe a little bit of editing. Email's a little harder to do on those days you're not feeling it. Those days, I'm out here, maybe I'll clean up the shop a little bit, I'll walk around outside, or I'll sit on YouTube a little bit and see what everybody's up to and just kind of see like what's going on on Instagram a little more. I'll spend a little more time on social media, maybe engaging more in the community, so at least that day isn't totally lost, but it's not nearly as productive as a day where I'm out shooting a video, getting it edited or getting it posted or whatever. Am I taller than Matt Esley? No, he's a normal sized person. <laughs> So this whole neighbor thing, the primary question here is from RISSYNC, but there's a few other people that are wondering about the neighbor situation and all that. It's probably one of the more popular things I get. And specifically here, RISSYNC asks about how I make sure I'm a good neighbor. Well, honestly, I never thought about this until people started berating me for my activities in my own yard. So this might be a little bit more of a rant or a longer, longer winded thing than any other one so far. So before I started doing anything like this outside and even when I was growing up, your neighbors are like your extended family. You're looking out for each other and that's just the way I was raised. I was always raised that if someone around you needs help, that you help them. It's not it doesn't seem that crazy, but apparently that's like hard to ask for these days. So when I bought this house, this is my first time being a homeowner. I met all my neighbors. I introduced myself around. I talked to them. And we all kind of know each other, what we all do. And over the years, if someone needs help with something, they know that I can help them if they need it. So there's been times where someone needs a plumbing fixture or a fitting, plumbing fitting or a gas pipe fitting or a valve because they're doing a stove install or they're doing some pipe or whatever. I have a whole box of fittings. I know that if it's like a quick thing they need, they can come take something from my fittings bin. That's fine. They need a circular saw or a drill to drill a hole because they don't have one of those things. They can come get that as well from here. If they had a limb blow down, I'll come over with my chainsaw and help them cut it up. If they you know, bought a sofa or a table. I have a pickup truck. I'll go and help them pick up this piece of furniture and bring it in their house. That's just something that I would do regardless. Uh, in the winter time, because I have the biggest driveway in my whole neighborhood, when I moved here, I got the biggest snowblower, or a, like bigger than anyone else's in the area. And a lot of people don't have snowblowers. So when I'm out there, I'm already out there, the snowblower's running, I'm already all bundled up. I'll go around and do the driveways in like the immediate area around my property just because I'm out there already. Not because anybody asked me or because I'm trying to like win points with people, but because that's naturally what I would do. So getting back to the whole I have a sawmill in my backyard thing and then the whole noise thing, I guess. It's not, it's not that noisy and it does produce noise. It's a lot quieter than my chainsaw mill ever was, but you know, so does my snowblower makes noise, my lawnmower makes noise, and that doesn't make nearly as much noise as those things and it's for shorter periods of time. Now, the other thing I think people have a misguided thought of, like I'm out there doing it all day, every day, which is false. I'm out there maybe a few hours at a time, once or twice a month when I was using it when I first built it. So for those first six months of the year, uh, I was out there using it two days a month at the most for four hours a day in the middle of the day when most of my neighbors are at work. Now, as far as like time frames go, for instance, my neighbor next door, he works in evening and night shift, so he gets home from work around two, three in the morning, 
so I know he's sleeping and I don't really try to make any noise be before like 10 or 11 because I know he is probably sleeping. And then at night, I don't really try and go past 6 or so, you know, after dinner. And once it's dinner time, I'm done. I'm not going to be out there making noise at 8 o'clock at night. Um, even though it seems like it's the middle of the night because I live in Minnesota and from November until basically when there is no daily saving, it's pitch black, you know, before 6 and in December it's pitch black at 4.30. So even though it's pitch black in my videos and looks like it's middle of the night, it's not really even past dinner time. <laughs> What are you doing? Driving in the car with Dad. Okay, good. I'm doing I'm doing this Q and A video. I have a question on here. I thought you guys could help me answer. Okay. Okay. John Hastings wants to know: Did I fall on my head a lot as a child? Did he fall on his head a lot as a child? No. No, he never fell. <laughs> no, he never did. Why is that? What kind of question is that? I don't know. I just read the questions and answer them. So this was fun. And I actually have enough questions here that I'll probably do another video like this just based off of the questions that I have left on here. Uh, still a lot of good questions in that list. And let me know what you think about this format for things, how it's, um, you know, because it's different than doing it live. Personally, for me, this is a lot easier um, to kind of keep everything flowing and not to worry about what's going on with finding all the questions. Um, so for this format of thing, at least for me personally, I like this better, but feel free to let me know your thoughts. So that's going to do it for this one. Let me know if you have any questions about anything I talked about today. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.